Good afternoon and welcome to All About Animals. I am Sherry Gratitor. My guest today is Sandy Wisniewski. Do I pronounce your name well? Yes, you do. I'm so excited. From Animal Education and Rescue, which is her organization. And, you know, before we get into our topic of the day, what kinds of things do you do? We are a full service humane society. So we take in homeless animals. We also do educational programs in schools and scouting troops and all different kinds of different venues. We also have a pet therapy program where we go to a local nursing home and visit residents. And we have a youth club for kids ages eight until 18. And the youth club is very active. I'm sure. Um, we have humane investigators that investigate cases of abuse and neglect of animals. And I think that does it. Sounds like you've got an awful lot going on. I think that's plenty. Yeah, it's great. We okay. love it. And so the topic we talked about that is near and, dear, near and dear to both of our hearts, that was hard to get out, uh, is the hard-to-place animal. Yes. Okay. What constitutes a hard-to-place animal? Well, a hard-to-place animal is one that either has a physical handicap or they could have uh, chronic health issues or behavior problems. It could be an animal that's elderly, a senior animal, or an animal that maybe has three legs or is blind, deaf, something like that. Or something that needs treating like diabetes or epilepsy. Yes, or, yeah, so health issues, there's, right. There's, there's so much stuff going yes. on. And I'm quite certain that once you get an animal like that into the organization, it's real hard to get it back out. Very hard. And it really depends on what the issues the animal has. Interestingly, uh, dogs or cats with three legs get adopted very quickly. And people think that they don't, but they do. Uh, animals that have one eye get adopted very quickly. Um, very teeny tiny senior dogs get adopted quickly. And uh, very old giant breed dogs get adopted very quickly. Yeah, that's amazing. I know. Mm -hmm. You would think that they wouldn't, but they do. The ones that have a difficult time, I would say the top two are uh, dogs with behavior problems, problems, specifically aggression issues of any kind, and, uh, and animals that also have um, incontinence. I would say those are the top two that are the hardest to place. I would imagine, yes. And that would go even parallel to, let's say, a dog that is paralyzed in their back legs, which is difficult to adopt out, but not impossible. Actually, an incontinent dog is harder to adopt out than even one that's paralyzed. I could see why. Yeah. And uh, clearly, it's understandable why a dog that has maybe some aggression issues, maybe they resource guard their food, or maybe they're not good with small children, those kind of uh, dogs um, or cats could could be very difficult to adopt out. Now I can I can understand and and have lived with a dog that was not good with small children. Of course, he wasn't good with big children either. Um, children were just not an issue with this dog, and and eventually I had to give up on him because he took it from being aggressive toward children to being aggressive toward toward everyone, including me, and tried to take my face off when I wasn't looking. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and that was after I'd had him for several years and worked with him for several years. But it's, is it your experience that, that a lot of these animals that are aggressive can be trained out of it? I would say it depends on what it is. By and large, yes. If a dog, it can be either trained out of it or managed. For instance, if you have a dog that's good in every other way, but they resource guard their dinner. And resource guarding means that they are become aggressive when they're being fed. Correct. So they guard around their food. One, it depends on how badly they guard their food. Are, is it when you're in a space like as close as you and I are, or is it someone's in the entire room? That's a vast difference. But that's more, even that is a little bit more manageable. If that's the only issue, you just don't give them treats. So that way you don't risk that kind of resource guarding. You don't give them... Uh, anything like raw hides or uh, anything that they could guard in that way, and you feed them in their crate. Mm -hmm. So that it's manageable. Is it solvable? Sometimes, and sometimes not. And it's a tremendous amount of <coughs> effort 
for something like that as an example, it would be a tremendous amount of effort and time of the foster family, whoever has the animal, to put into on a daily basis. And what I've found is those kind of issues, um, it's a lot to ask of those people. And more often than not, they're not going to have the time or ability to follow through to actually correct that kind of behavior. So there's things that could be managed. If you've got a dog that is incontinent, they need to be in diapers. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, a lot of people don't want to deal with diapers. If the dog, let's say, is peeing in the diaper, that's one thing. If the dog's also pooping involuntarily, that's impossible to put a diaper on a dog right. like that. So that kind of makes it a little bit different as well. Makes it almost impossible to place. Really. It's very difficult and it takes a very special person to do that. Now back to aggression, uh, when you were talking about the dog that you had, the worst kind of situation you could have is what happened with you. And that's a dog that is unpredictably aggressive. That is a dog that you just aren't sure when or where the bite is gonna happen. And in that case, in my opinion, if you don't even know where it's gonna come from or how it's gonna, how it's gonna happen, mm -hmm. that that is a very dangerous dog. And um, there is no placement for a dog no, like that. No, there was not, and that dog unfortunately did have to be euthanized. Yeah. It's the only time in my life yeah. I have ever made the decision to euthanize a dog. But, as and I had two small children at the time, mm -hmm. small ones, and little kids coming in and out of the house all yeah. the time, and I isolated the dog when the kids were in, but I was alone with the dog in the living room when he decided that my face looked like lunch. And at that point I said, I can't take a chance on having anyone in this house right. with that dog. And, and You did the responsible thing, It broke thing, my Sherry. heart. Well, you did the responsible yeah. thing, Sherry. I, I'm, uh, you know, I, we are a no-kill humane society, but we also believe that there are times when you have to do what is responsible. And if you are putting other people at risk um, and you've done everything you can for that animal, and um, it's, it's the end of the line as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Luckily, it does not happen, as you know. Yeah. It, it rarely happens, thank goodness, and most things you can manage. Most of them, and because I have taken in all of my life, I've taken in abused dogs. Every mm -hmm. single one of them has been an abuse case dog. Uh, and outside of the one, I've been able to rehabilitate every one of them. Some took two years, some took a year. But every one of them became a responsible canine citizen when they were when, when I was when I was comfortable with them, mm -hmm. uh, and and I firmly believe that most dogs that have issues, and and the ones that I run into the most are fear biters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And fear biters that that can be both managed and fixed. Sometimes a combination of both. Mm -hmm. Uh, the key is when you have an animal that has behavior problems like that is everything has to be done extremely slowly and you just have to be really, really careful and don't take any chances because if that animal bites somebody and that animal ends up with a bite record, finding a home for a, for a dog with a bite record, it's just extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. But if you go really, really slow um, yes, it takes a lot of patience. Yes, it takes a lot of time. And never corner them. No. Yes, because no. that's really when you see the, the greatest response. And dogs don't want to bite. Dogs don't want to be aggressive. This is just not part of the, the nature of the dog. Uh, it's, it's a learned behavior from something, whether it's from being starved or whether it's from being beaten or whether it's from, you know, some dogs are just born terribly shy and terribly frightened. But a dog that's biting is a dog that has a, an emotional problem, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. And a lot of those can be fixed. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. So what have you got going now that you're looking for homes for? We have a lot of special needs animals in our care. That is where my heart is for the ones that are hard to adopt out. And uh, one of our long-termers is Mona. She is a uh, purebred uh, Alaskan Husky. And we got her at eight weeks old. She was completely incontinent. And she also had daily seizures. Uh, we raised over $5,000 for medical for her. And we had surgery. So the bladder issue is 70% better, mm -hmm. which is great. Uh, she, do she does take medication to control the seizures. Um, and so she is a special needs dog that we've had for two and a half years. We also have a little minpin named Mouse, 
and Mouse has neurological issues, and she stumbles around like she's had too much to drink. Mm -hmm. But she has, she has no idea that anything's wrong with her, and she's really happy. We also have a blind dog that's 13 years old. His name is Magoo, and he's a favorite of a lot of people. Uh, he's been with us for two and a half years. And there's more. There's uh, quite a few special needs. We have a couple incontinent dogs that uh, one named Binky I've had for eight years. Wow. Yeah. So her adaptability is pretty slim because she's incontinent. And um, she's older now. And now she's older, mm -hmm. right? So um, if people can't adopt from us, um, if they don't feel that they have the ability to do that, I completely understand, but we definitely need funding to continue to take care of these animals, get them their annual vaccines if they get sick or injured. We need to be able to get them to the vet. They need their food, their lodging, um, their care. Um, so How do you have them are, lodged right now? They are in foster homes. Okay, so they are in foster homes. Yes. That's what I thought. Yes. So, I mean, the big thing is donations. Obviously, if they're in foster homes, you're not looking for volunteers. No. Okay, so, so, so you've got your, your volunteer foster people are in line. Right, so our expenses are food, our expenses are, the biggest expense is medical. Mm -hmm. So obviously we need to give them monthly heart guard or you know, frontline, whatever, flea and tick stuff, heart medicine. Um, and then Mona is on medications, so her medications are $100 a month mm -hmm. for her medications. And uh, we have a few other animals that are on medications as well. So I would say medical is probably our biggest expense. Do you have a program where someone could adopt a dog, um, adopt the expenses of a dog, the way you do when you, when, the, when you talk about in zoos, you could adopt a panda bear? and then pay that, that animal's expenses. Do you have such a program in place? We have a program like that where someone can donate every month and they can sponsor a particular animal. So if they wanted to sponsor Mona, um, they can definitely indicate that um, a, as a monthly uh, amount. And you know. we will get those dogs' pictures onto this show so that uh, people can see them. But I'm assuming your website has a picture of animals that you've got that are looking for homes or sponsors. Yes. Our what web is that website? The website's www.aear.org. Animal Education and Rescue. If you can't remember the acronym, remember the words. Um, and if people are interested in donating? They can just go to our website and click on the Donate Now um, piece and, um, and go ahead and donate online. Or if they prefer, there's an address they can send a check to or come visit us at one of our events and you can put money in our donation jar. Are those events online? Yes, all our events are online. So you're showing online and people can get online and they can see the animals online and they can um, adopt the expense of an animal. Absolutely. Uh, if they can't adopt and if they can adopt an animal and you know, I know from doing this show for 30-some years, and I don't know if it's 38 at this point or how many, but from doing this show for as many years as we have, I know how many people watch it who have very large hearts. And if any of you who do have very large hearts and would be willing to invest in an animal that had special needs, here's the question, though, Sandy, and because we're just about out of time. Mm -hmm. Is there someone who will educate a potential adopter of a special needs dog as to how they need to care for that dog? Absolutely, that, okay. that would be part of the adoption process is making sure that they understand what would be involved in the daily care of the animal. Okay, and if they need help, they can then call you? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. again, Animal Education and Rescue, you can find them online, they do wonderful work. And I really appreciate your coming in. Thank you. And we will now take you to Save a Pet and show you some of the dogs and cats waiting there for adoption. <laughs>